Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the third Ace Attorney. Also, it's not morning. I just said that because, uh, I, I don't know. Custom. I'm accustomed to it. Well, good afternoon, either way. Welcome to Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright, Trials and Tribulations. The last game of the trilogy we're going to be tackling. And then, once this is done... When we're ready, we'll tackle the Apollo Trilogy, and then we'll do the Great Ace Attorney, and then we'll do uh, maybe uh, Edgeworth, <clears throat> Edgeworth Investigations. So we still have a lot of games to go, so don't you fret. There's much more Ace Attorney to go around. We are far from the end. But of this collection, this is the last game. <clears throat> but it'll be a nice, like, four or five, maybe six streams. We'll see. Like the others... Let's hop right in. I don't know. I got nothing else to say. <clears throat> Turn about memories. So it's all about Mia and me? Backstory? Ba 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 backstory? Alright. That fever dream's over. That game was awesome. Talking about, thank goodness you're here. We just played that for Vod Frogs. How'd I get into this mess? Why? Why'd I do that? Whoa. Oh. Phoenix is meeting somebody. That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business! I'm telling you for your sake continue to see her it's gonna be bad news you're lying just listen to me there's something you need to know about that girl stop it D don't talk about her like that did Phoenix punch him in the jaw whoa Hey, nice sweater, Phoenix. Hey, it wasn't me. I, I didn't... Uh-oh. Phoenix is in the hot seat again? I didn't do it. Oh, this is a memory, right? Five years earlier. Mia Faye, second trial. Ooh. April... Okay. Are we playing as Mia for this one? All right. It's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ahem! Oh, Mr. Grossberg, good morning! Dahlia Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Phoenix Wright's girlfriend dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. Doug Swallow and Dahlia Hawthorne. Phoenix is 21 here. My client, a third year art student at Ivy University. He currently has a cold. He's an art student? Didn't he go to school? How old is Phoenix? So in the timeline now for the last game, he was 25? Because that's how old Phoenix, uh, or that's all how old Edgeworth was. I'm trying to do the tribulations, mister. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, good good morning. Oh, uh, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I'm relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Let's go of my labels. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I... Uh, Sorry, I'm just I'm so nervous. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, dear. I'm Marvin Grossberg, emeritus service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Uh, still, you surprised me. What with your earnest request last night? Let me handle this case. You suddenly said, and quite forcefully too. I just found out yesterday about the case. I mean. What, you've already learned all the relevant facts? Ding time. Oh, he's actually dead. Fatal electric shock. 
Well, about that, you see, I mean, of course I have, I, I think. Oh dear. In any case, don't let our client see that you're nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweat over there? That's our client. Hey, Phoenix! <laughs> Good morning, everybody! Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just wanted to say, I'll give it all I've got. So, I lo by the way, I love that sweater. I love that costume. Phoenix already wanted to be a defense attorney. Why is he an art student? Is that going to get explained? Because Edgeworth made him want to be a... Oh, I guess because he saw Edgeworth become a prosecutor, and that's why he did it? That's uh, it's 2020. Oh. Yep, I'll be fine. N no problem. <laughs> <coughs> hey, this is canon. I still have COVID. Oh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something? Mr. R R Ree? Yeah, actually, it's right. Like the fu like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask's for. My doc says this way, I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you're truly innocent, I promise I'll save you. Please let go of my shirt. That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Fay. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. First time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm gonna win. So she lost her first trial and got butt hurt. For my client and for myself. April 11th, 11 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Is the judge going to look any younger? <laughs> oh, no, but it seems uh, Weasley does. The court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. T whoa, whoa, calm down there, Mr. Payne. The judge was born that way. He came out bald. The prosecution's ready, Your Honor. The defendant today is Miss... 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 Mia Fey, was it? Y yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be the leading defense. Yes, well, you see, Mr. Grossberg had a bit of an emergency. Uh, emergency? But isn't that him standing right there next to you? Uh, yes, well, um, he, uh... He, his brain no work good. I do the work now. You, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl. It'll all be over soon. What was all that about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events in the day... Uh, uh, in, on the day of... in question. Fuck. Uh, wait. Line! <clears throat> the incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Hmm, sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Ooh, look, the wires snapped. He got electrocuted by a hanging wire. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. And the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway, they then called the police. Hmm. 
That certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's, it, you know, it's the starting case. It's definitely like, he was trying to warn Phoenix about his girlfriend. She's probably a killer. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> Your reputation for sagacity, sagacity, sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. Unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, he died because Phoenix was too sexy, you see. And, well, he can be found on being too hot. So lock him up, I say. Perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. I am a gentleman, if you will. Um, what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Huh. A perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cars, go on. Please say you know at least this much. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Ugh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Now see here. The details of the case are filed in the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? The court record. I think I can look at that by pressing the R1 button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? Electrocution, Your Honor. I did already read it, unlike Mia. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. It is, it is fun to see Mia act like Phoenix. So you know, you know it's not completely Phoenix's fault why he's like that now. Mia taught him all he knows in his tomfoolery. Execution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun perhaps? Did he shoot him with his laser eyes? Did he pull out his big laser gun, the big bad laser gun? Uh, Your Honor, I think you have a good point there. He did have a biggy wiggy lasery gun, doodad. Yes, the answer to that will become crystal clear as the trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? How does blood go bad except for when it extrudes through the body? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator if you catch my drift. Yeah, I don't like his little weenus. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time I would like to see some supporting evidence. Uh, evidence? Uh, no need to get uh, worked up over this. Uh, as I said, all of our weapons can be found in the court record. Oh, whoa, whoa, don't, don't overwrite that. We gotta have a news save. Try set a better example for the young lady. Yeah, evidence isn't the only thing the court record. People's profiles are as well. We can toggle between profiles and evidence with the R1 button. We sort of go over all of it. Now then, let's see what you got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Uh, Adalia. <laughs> Take that! The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, was it? 
Very good, Miss Fay. You seem to have picked up on that much, at least. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until uh, about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. She clearly has some part to play in this story. Hmm. Oh, he's gone and done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. But the defendant himself. Uh, well, Miss Fay. It's fine, Emmy. After all, Mr. Wright's innocent, right? I couldn't imagine playing this game without knowing what Ace Attorney is or these characters. I don't know what you would think. Because after this trial's over, they're going to unleash like, yeah, okay, Mia's dead. Phoenix is a well-tuned defense lawyer now. Uh, and he's only had one defeat, and that was a cannon one. The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to, st uh, to the witness stand. I mean, it's not that hard to call the tutorial. It is the tutorial laser. <laughs> Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Phoenix Wright. Uh, my job is... Well, right now, I guess I'm a suspect. No, no. He means what did you do before you were arrested? Oh! <laughs> I was a <an> university student. <coughs> Mr. Wright. You understand that the... But, but, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you, I was... <coughs> Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his coal to the rest of us? Made that for the joke. Uh, well. Mostly. It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Uh, right away, Your Honor. <sighs> The victim and I. Uh, I, I admit I was there, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Right. Like I said, I, I'm not a killer. Looks like the judge understands. You're being naive. You know, too naive. Huh? Hehehehe. <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. That would be... This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right. And it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? For witnesses lie, their statements will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Yes, even if he's your client in court, all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. Oh, why, why didn't you say, why didn't you tell Phoenix that yesterday? You know, he needed that advice. What does he mean by that? Is he just saying, is he saying that testimony just now? That it was a lie? A contradiction? Now then, your cross-examination, if you please, Miss Fay. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. Oh, he looks a little guilty. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Uh, I admit I was there. When you say there, you mean the place where the victim was murdered? Yeah, it's sort of. The place where something happened, anyway. Something? You can't hide what happened. We have photographic evidence. <laughs> uh, anyway, Mr. Wright, uh, what were you doing at the scene of the crime? I thought you said you didn't know the victim, Mr. Swallow. 
That was just a coincidence. We bumped into each other by accident. A coincidence, hmm? You say you found the body, so who called the police? Huh? Um, unfortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students? That's correct. They were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. What is this true, Mr. Wright? Can you stop sneezing every time you're in a bind? Well, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body. But, but, but I... hardly knew the guy to begin with. So you didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right! Uh, well, no. That is, I mean... So which is it? Did you know him or not? <laughs> now see here! You can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day. Uh, well... I guess I did know his name. News to me? Why didn't you just tell me that before? Uh, I heard he used to date Dolly. Who's this Dolly person? Ah, yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Uh, young love. So bittersweet. That's all I knew about him. I like how he keeps, keeps getting his fucking mask caught everywhere else. Like, he's speaking so loudly, he's blowing the mask up. Mr. Wright, you stated in uh, the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... That doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Achoo! Well, Mr. Wright... Uh, no, it wasn't me! I'm not a killer, I swear! Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was a, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yeah, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union jacket on the back of his shirt. Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean. Yes, that's right. I, I saw it at the crime scene. That's why that's why I figured he must love British stuff, see? It's true! Cross my heart! I, I swear I didn't do it! He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. May I ask you something, Miss Fay? Yes, Your Honor? Who's this person, anyway? This Union Jack fellow? Mm, he sounds interesting! Yeah, the past kids are all dreams. <laughs> the Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh, I see. So you mean, like, the Stars and Stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Yeah, there's a contradiction here. M Mr. Grossberg, quickly now, show that boy you mean business with evidence, I mean. Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, do you think you can manage your, uh, on your own from now on? I can handle it myself. <sighs> you mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew. I I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always press them to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you present some definitive proof. Union Jack, huh? Doesn't seem to be a Union Jack on the back there. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Y yeah, I'm sure it was right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some... point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. 
But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. He's so happy. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me! Please forgive me! Mia, you made your client cry. Let him. That pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. Can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. He <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. <sighs> Uh-oh. Did I go too far? You seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I took some, but... Was that medicine you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. Hey, wait a sec. How do you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? I love over-the-counter medication. I use it all the time. <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it. Does he even have anything to do with this case? Oh, does it even have anything to do with this case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take another look at the photo from the crime scene. Well, what's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. What? Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine. Dropped by Mr. Wright and hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so can only be... Uh, can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Order! Order in the court! I would like some Cold Killer X now, please. Your Honor, it's not really Cold Killer X. It's it's just cocaine in little tiny bits, uh, bits and bobs. I mean, you can have one, but I'm taking most of it. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all this? Uh... This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks and my poor, poor hemorrhoids. Thanks, Grossberg. You're really adding a lot. I'm glad they brought you back for this one. The truth is, I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so he agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3, we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I'd been taking Cold Killer X for the last two to three days. But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on that day. Mr. Wright, that's a completely different testimony than the one you gave previously. Choo choo choo! I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me for if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Miss mm. Faye, please begin your cross examination of this bullshit. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies. Have you ever met the met Mick 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 Have you had uh, 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 uh. Sorry. I'm trying to get something out of my nose and I'm a little preoccupied. 
Okay. Have you ever met the victim before? No, no, never, but that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. Hey, this Dolly person is... Uh, my, uh... It's kind of embarrassing. She's my, uh... Sweetheart. <laughs> what was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. Does Mia already like Phoenix? She already likes him? That quick? We're defending him! <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm. So it is one of those nasty love triangles, I see. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, and we were both right there on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was uh, studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of I IVU. An alchemist? I see. I gotta admit, I was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. Ooh, how fascinating! He sounds like quite the ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe we should ask him for more details? About the department at the time of the meeting. So you're absolutely certain that you met at 2.45? Yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments. Yeah, those pharmaceutical guys are always in the lab whipping something up. That looks like I was right. Yeah, he's right about the time, anyway. Witness, let's go on with your testimony. Let's do the other one. Gotta get every bit of info we can. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure, I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage uh, electricity. Uh, that's right, uh, they sure do look dangerous. They use not standard voltages, so th there are high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables. Yeah, uh, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead and around the roof. I, mean, I think we're getting somewhere. So what was it you were talking about? You know, <laughs> that maybe we should hang out again sometime? Hang out again sometime, I wish that were true. So you say you went back. Uh, yeah, that's when I found the body. Yeah, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, well that's right. I, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why would you go back there? Uh, I thought maybe we could make up. Achoo! 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 Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one's buying this. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose it's common sense. I suppose common sense is not always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. But I lost my bottle around lunchtime. Wait, hold on. I didn't get to through the last one. On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Um, 
Her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> mm, why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I I'm sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. <laughs> she really loves Phoenix right off the bat. Goddamn. Too bad she's dead. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. Then the defendant returned to the scene of the crime for an unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle, uh, either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Uh, However, there's one mystery that still remains. Th there is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon had been produced yet, correct? Yeah, I think... Uh, you know what? I think Phoenix did it. <sighs> how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done. Maybe I could still come out of this mess, uh, this mess smelling like roses. Yeah, I can probably do it. We got the high voltage wires already. Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that we've pieced together everything we've heard up until now. We should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Uh, of course I know that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. Wearing one of the lying stones? It needs to be, like, filled with energy. Which pearls did? I don't know if these two can do it. I think they can, but... I don't, I'm not too sure. I think these guys do the spirit summoning. The spirit channeling. Oh no, because Pearl did that too. I don't know. Now then, Miss Faye, let's see what you got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Come on, Judge. I, I like... I know you haven't interacted with Phoenix yet, so you, you don't know how crazy these court cases can get, but this one's pretty cut and dry. It's like... Come on. It's right... It's right... It's right there. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly is the murder weapon in this photo? Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard? The machines the, pharma uh, the pharmacology students use in their experiments with, uh, require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then, the high voltage cable... Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. The most likely explanation. How old was Mia when she died? She was older than Phoenix, right? Phoenix was 24. It was five years ago. He's 21. So... This takes place three years before the first game. Uh, but we don't know how... Okay. Oh, so does this mean this game is five years in the future? A year after number two? Meaning Maya would be 19, Phoenix would be... 26? Right? Five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he's 21. So, yeah. He's 26. Minus 19. Pearl would be... 
Nine or ten? No, she'd be nine. I don't know. Are the birthdays going to be inconsistent again? Are we going to have a tough time piecing together things again? I guess we'll see. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what re that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The Defendant! Did you... Mm, that much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. It only exists between games, not during. So I should still be right, then. Right? It's been a year since number number two. Everybody's had one birthday. He said five years ago when we started. Yeah, that makes sense. That logic is... That logic holds water. You, you do? What is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. Most games have a year gap. Alright. I mean, yeah, that is definitely the pattern so far. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Uh, you mean... Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the severed uh, electrical cable. Order, order, order. That's enough. I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. You stick a fork in us, we're done. Mr. Grossberg! My hemorrhoids never lie. The show's over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong! Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! At this time, I'm prepared to render a verdict in this case. No! Phoenix! Hold it! Yeah! Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But I... I can't. I just can't say it. I told you what really happened, that I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Miss Faye... No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. Duh! Ah! Uh. Woman! We've already established the defense guilt! Uh, there's no further need for him to say anything else, of course. <clears throat> Wait a minute! Mr. Wright. I- I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further... <laughs> I, I... I did it. I admit it, I pushed him. It's my fault. It's my fault that D D Doug Swallow's dead. That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, that's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her. It's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's nothing you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Well, shit. I guess he did do it. 
Was that the truth? Yes, I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was a murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. But please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I, I believe in you. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. I still can't believe you really did push the victim. Uh, feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. Remember that? You remember the Harlem Shake? M Mia, you remember, remember that? The Harlem Shake. Do you know what I'm talking about, Mia? Mia, are you listening? Mia, the Harlem Shake, you get it? Like 2012. Like 2012, I'm talking about over here. That guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just laying there dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock. And that, as they say, is that. No, 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 no. The cable broke after he pushed him, and he was on the ground. So, like, the cable couldn't have reached him. Simple explanation indeed. The time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But, but when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. It's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Sexy doofus like him. Fuck. God, why do I want to fuck the defendant? Shit. Man, why do I want to fuck the defendant? God, this is... Oh, yo, yo, yo. Miss Faye. Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Y yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he's innocent, there must be some kind of evidence that will prove it. Everyone wants a piece of it, right? So what kinds of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. Yep, doesn't sound too bad to me. But gosh, I really would like to fuck Mr. Wright. Not as much as I do. Hey, I want to have sex with that man more than any of you. And I'm the judge, so what I say goes. Uh, is that all? Uh, yep. Well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Oh, boy, you're not doing yourselves any favors, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just, I just... I lost my temper and gave him a shove. Can you tell me about what happened a little more in detail? That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. Then he put on the jacket he was holding... Uh, and started to leave. That's when that's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. I said, "Hold it!" Don't know why it just came over me. I said, "I object to to that statement." I I don't know. I don't know why. It came, I, something came over me. I just po I just pointed at him, and my finger, it, uh, he, he fell over. I just gave him a light, gentle shove to the chest. When you did that, there was no severed cable anywhere to be seen? Right. There was nothing like that at all. But is, is it possible that you merely overlooked it? Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like cheap asphalt. Y 
Judge, you weren't even there, so you can't tell me shit. That's true. Hey, wait a minute. That's facts. Why don't we use that in court? That's a good point. <laughs> you weren't there. How do you know, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm? Damn it. Oh, right, you dirty bastard. Shit. I believe what's important here is the moment the push uh, occurred. Let's continue with the testimony, witness. A loud noise. And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? Uh, I'm not sure. It was really loud. It was like, snap! You know, uh, come to think of it, I wonder if it was... <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on dangerous ga uh, ground here. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important, so try to remember what it was. Uh, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ah, could it... could it have been... Yes, could it have been... Hurry up and tell us! When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it, and it broke. That was probably the loud noise I heard. An umbrella? And did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and fragile. Kind of like the honor. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Miss Fay? What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Uh, well... Of course it's important. The umbrella is no longer beneath him, Your Honor. If you looked at the fucking photo, you stupid freak. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important! No, this cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital! I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha! Now perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add that bit about the cheap umbrella to the testimony. After I shoved him, he fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. This one? Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that... I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? Stop without an umbrella? No, no, you can't. No. What? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. Y you're absolutely right. Hey, kind of like you, Mr. Wright. Please don't patronize me. S sorry. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! <laughs> can't be talking about flimsy when his hair's like that. That is, you know what? You bring up a lot of good points, trash kid. You bring up a lot of good points here. That hair is a crime in of itself. Order, order, order! The victim, he he moved. Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Oh, well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want it presented as evidence immediately. But the umbrella could have simply blown there by the wind. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There simply is no way it could have been blown by the wind. Now music is going hard. I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, 
But as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. No, 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 no! I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's attorney. The defendant's testimony, I mean, oops. The defendant's attorney. Well, that too, actually. That was a correct statement, even though I didn't say that. Phoenix's testimony. Well done, Mila. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through a cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess, you got another witness. Exactly! And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Incontrol- incontrovertible. There you go. Big word, but I said it. I said it! Are you impressed that I said that big word? Yes, there were so many letters. There was at least 15 letters in that word. Nobody cares that you can say that word. It, it, we say, this is a courtroom. We say big words all the time. Well, who's the witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly. I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to this whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime and the murder took place. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Oh, I love her little hair flick. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? Stop making horsey noises. Now I want to go to a petting zoo. Fuck you! I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Not able to be denied or disputed. Thank you for the, the dictionary uh, <laughs> definition. I kind of, you know, guessed. You know, context. But, thank you. Definitive. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Daria Hawthorne. Ah, uh, oh, I can't wait not to be sick anymore. Even though my throat's not technically sore, it still feels weird. So that's why some of the voices, like, become inconsistent, because I'm just trying to play around my fucking throat going weird. Miss Faye, oh, I'm sorry about what happened back in there. I, I, it's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, I, I, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy! You should be serious after hiding such important facts. But... But the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She... She's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life, huh? <laughs> that... Oh, kill that bitch! Would you mind... Tell me more about you and Miss Dolly of Hawthorn. Uh, sure, no problem. Yeah, you look like you're straining there, Mia. Uh, anyway, Dolly and I—well, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I was studying to be a lawyer on the uh, uh, on the side. Anyway. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. He's, he's he is studying to be a lawyer too. One day, she and I just bumped into each other and the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave this to me on the day we met as a symbol of our love. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but, uh, but then she took it off. But before she... But, but, but before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present. I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little Lada, uh, Dolly. 
Not Lotta. Never Lotta. Certainly is a little bottle, all right. So tiny. You could barely fit, like, um, one happy memory in here. I mean, I could get you a necklace with a huge bottle and, well... This lawyer pussies ain't nothing you ever seen, Phoenix! <laughs> that makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness, uh, my happiness with the whole world. Dahlia's present borrowed from Phoenix Wright. Show it to everyone. Uh, anyway, enough about her. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started <clears throat> dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. He said, I want to make everyone else jealous. Ah, I see. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne uh, eight months ago wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? M yeah, it was. H but how did you... This happened on August 27th right here in this courthouse. What's this, a newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder, murder in the courthouse? M murder? We're reading that. Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You'll believe there's some connection between these two cases. Am I correct? I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I need to finish this myself. Well, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I'm going to do whatever I can to be of help. Well, looks like recess is over. Better get moving. Did Phoenix ever, like, say he had met Grossberg before in the first game? I think he said he hadn't, right? Maybe he just didn't remember him. That recess seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. To be continued already. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tutorial one? Whoa! Okay. That's better. That's more like it. That's more like a victory jingle right there. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. The next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. She is pretty. What's with this prissy bitch? Taking my Phoenix... I mean... What am I saying? My Phoenix? I've never met him before this. <laughs> In my long career as a judge, I've been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe he actually just said that. Oh, uh, uh, now then, witness, uh, could you please state your full name? I, uh... Don't worry, sweetie, there's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. I will bash them with my gavel. I love how they look straight at me when they say that. Uh, thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I must feel right at home. Not at all! It was nothing. We may move on now. What's your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior at literature at Ivy University. 
I just want to say, it's honor for me to be here in your presence. Does he have a wife? Uh, I don't know. She's 20. Well, we still don't know how old the judge is. But we know how old you are. 49! Winston! The honor's all mine! No, the honor's all mine! I only know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Oh, poor Mia. Um, sir? Is there anything I can help you with? Just go on and say whatever on your, whatever's on your mind. I'm sure that there's been some kind of mistake. Feeney wouldn't kill anyone, I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you say that. I'm gonna be a tough witness, all right. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Not guilty. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. Also, if you kiss me, I will let Phoenix go. Free of charge, of course. Well, the charge was the kiss, but hey, you know, if you've already done it, then there's no charge. See what I'm getting at? I've been planning to go back to Feeney's place after class was over. Feeney and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. Then suddenly Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. That's when Feeney noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. A young lady, as old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Okay. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please tell us the truth. But, but I, I would never. That's more than enough witness. I will not allow this piece of shit, slut, whore to go on any further. Phoenix Wright is my man now, and you're going to jail, cause you were the murderer from six months ago. Yep. I decide that now. Bye. Well, I agree with Mia. Off to the brig. What do you mean by that? Please, just let my... Uh, let me proceed to my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Tiki, you haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. What's this, so you two are acquainted? Yes, we met before, once. In any case, Miss Fey, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madame Fey. Madame? I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. I'll show you, I'll steal your men. Kick you in the head, too. Oh. I've been planning to go back to Phoenix Place after class was over. Is she gonna get, like, really jealous if we talk about this? No, unless I'm mistaken, Feeney, I mean, Mr. Wright, is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Well, I am in the literature building. Uh, I'm studying Japanese. Senri. Senru. 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 Senru? Senryu. Senryu poetry. I don't know how to say it. I believe it's Senryu. Oh, ho, ho. how wonderful. Isn't that humorous? Yet satirical style of haiku, yes? Nothing left to do when a man reaches this age. Sleep is his best friend. That's supposed to be poetry? More like a midlife crisis. For me to get to the art department, I had to work through the, walk through the back area. Ah, uh, yes, I see. Well, that makes sense. When I want to enter the courthouse, I walk through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? No, no, Mia, you stupid idiot. Tunneling in. I've tunneled in once before. Like a little mole, like a little mole rat. Me. Hold it! 
So, who is this Dougie person? Oh, I'm sorry. Doug Swallow. We were dating until about eight months ago. So, what were Dougie and Mr. Swallow and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? How can you be so mean? I would never, I would never use drop. I was raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Why am I being demonized here? Please go on. What did you see next? Hold it. Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Ducky. I press her for a good, for no good reason. I just know the judge will get angry with me. So what should I do about her testimony just now? Feeble lies are not very becoming of Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them all, shall we? What? I would never. Miss Fay, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I believe the defense is engaged in a, a fishing expedition. That is, uh, she has no supporting... But please don't glare at me like that. I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? <coughs> That was a big, that was a big one. There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. Sorry, you make me so angry. It would be much better if you just came out and told us the whole truth. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Yes, Your Honor, I, I will. If you, if you don't mind, I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Really get beavered than badgered. I actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. You didn't see it? Well, I saw the moment when Dougie fell to the ground. And at the time, there were only the two of them at the scene. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and the victim, Doug Swallow. Yes, that's right. So then, what did it look like they were doing to you? I thought they were having a nice, friendly afternoon conversation. Oh, give me a break. That's why I really wasn't watching them all too closely. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary at all? No, nothing at all, Mr. Judge. No, oh, I like the sound of that, Mr. Judge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I ate some bad worms earlier. Sorry. Terribly sorry. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. I go find some other students and they called the authorities. You say you didn't hear anything unusual, is that correct? Yes, that's why I looked, that's why I was very rela uh, relaxed looking at the scenery around me. That's nice, but I find it just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. He clearly testified the, to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a large, sharp noise. Oh, that was, that was me farting! I farted! That was a fart. I'm sorry. He said that? If you were really that close, why didn't you hear this noise too? I... Uh, well, m maybe she farted. I, I don't know. All girls fart too. Miss Faye, don't be so prude. Addiction. I never fart for your information. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Hi! Um, may I have a moment to answer? But by all means. 
I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. I was plugging my ears and going, la 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 la, I'm killing my ex-boyfriend, la 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 la, framing my new boyfriend, la 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 la. You see, the truth is, I had headphones on and I was listening to music at the time. Headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun yet, uh, to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. So I put my headphones on to block it out. <laughs> well, your honor, a 20-year-old scared of thunder. What are you, eight? <laughs> As you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. Wait a second, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change this whole case. Yeah, she said there was thunder, and when there's thunder... Say it with me. She was listening to music. Your Honor, there's a problem with the witness's testimony. What do you mean? Did you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? Well, if light... It... Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Now is not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? See, that means that Phoenix Wright's not guilty. Wait a minute. Oh, you nearly got me there. <laughs> I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. So what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But the very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was in fact the victim of a stray bolt. But wouldn't you be able to tell? It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? Alright, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty. Hmm, I like my floppy hair penis. Uh, anyways, I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on the on that day at that location. What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit. And who is this affidavit from? Well, I'll have you affidavit. It's from the pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out the court testimony of the ph uh, pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power around, uh, all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the, uh, the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Mm, I see. Apparently, the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. The old power cable broke due to some sort of impact on 4-9 at 2.55 p.m. However, there's one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? 
Well, I suppose you could say that. Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your Honor? I don't like how this one's looking one bit. Because it was definitely Phoenix pushing him. <laughs> yeah, someone just tapping you. Just like, ah! Electricity. Ah! Uh, you're a murderer now. You shoved him lightly, murderer. To come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well, then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? <laughs> the time incident of Chris, it would have been a lawyer. The police are questioning the 19 year old female college student who was sitting with the victim. Broke due to some sort of impact? On top of his umbrella. Who or what caused it? Hmm. 3 p.m. Hey, look at that! It's past 3 p.m. It's like 5 past. That's a lie. Uh, well, it's either... I'm guessing it was probably Doug hitting it, right? Well, Your Honor? I believe that the only thing that has snapped is the mind of the defense. Ah, that was one of your best lines yet, Your Honor. Me is way hotter than Dahlia, yeah. I do agree with that. Dahlia is just like, she's cute, but like, I don't know. That's where it ends. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now this happened around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds about right. Wait, are you saying that? The lab equipment lost power at 2.55, which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yes, the prosecution also came to that very same conclusion. And it was the very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. No, no, no. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. But what's that supposed to mean? Did I just tell you it happened at 2.55, you freak? It took five minutes for him to just lay on the ground and then get up and get electrocuted? What are you talking about? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right, the victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. How, Your Honor? Sorry, Your Honor, but you're... But no, it doesn't make any sense at all. The victim was shoved into the far pole. Then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. Ah, I, I, I thought about that, but he didn't bring it up because it would make me look bad. In other words, someone other than my clan must have electrocuted the victim. Order, order in the court! Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. It's true, the defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be... Um, Mr. Judge, sir, may I say something? I actually remember, uh, to the Mr. Feeny Weeny put him on the zappy zappy and he don't move no more. The Madam Attorney's explanation. She said things that are a little different than I remember them. <coughs> 
What are you talking about, you bitch? Shut up! Please, just once more. He testify one last time, please, Mr. Judge. Of course it's all right. Just go ahead and give your two new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. Truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first throw was into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Ducky tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Ducky being electrocuted all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm, so after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And then when the defendant pushed him for the second time... I'm so sorry, Feeny, but, but I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing, am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Uh, by the way, that happened at, uh, 2.55. The, the breaking. You're saying it happened in a minute and the death is at 3? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up the clock, I think. That's probably the best, uh, probably what they want me to do. On handprint? Yeah, I don't think that's it, though. I think I think it's the time. They put an emphasis on, on her bullshitting about it taking a minute. Objection. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the way Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the pre uh, precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? My point is, what time was it when the lab suffered the power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Wow! Shit! Would you care to explain this to the court, Miss Dahlia? Hawthorne, you slut, horse lying bitch, cunt! What exactly during, what happened during this ten minute interval, you bloody bitch mother sucking dickhead? <laughs> the defense proposes that she's a poopy head! And it was during the interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow! Oh, order! Order in the court! What's this all about? This is nonsense! The, the real murderer! Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. I don't have Cat Jam Jam. Cat Jam Jam? Then, 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 then. Who, 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 who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? Well, if the music had kept going, I was going to put some dancing helpies, but... I also put them. Whatever. There they are. Look at them dance. Look at them go! They're dancing. There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. Was there a window of opportunity for the real killer? Miss Faye, is the defense ready to indict someone as the real killer? It's finally time. This is the moment, moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor, we're ready. Very well, but remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Fay. It could only have been you. Dahlia Hawthorne! Grasping at straws! Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. Exactly what were you doing during that entire time, Miss Hawthorne? 
Yep, we were we were right. Were you really listening to some music while cheering them on as they fought? I find that hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Listen, I said it, and I don't care that I said it. Twitch can't do anything, alright? Order, Miss Faye! What, I mean, what, why? Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. <laughs> How could you say something so mean, Madame Faye? I, I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge. Hey, that's our boy Phoenix! Your Honor! But please, I have something I want to say. You? What is it? Please, please strike everything the defense said from the record. What the? Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye! Dolly, she... she couldn't do something like that. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat! Bailiff, grab that man! Uh, leave my dolly alone! <laughs> that boy, he's got himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. Seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. You better take a good look at it. It uh, details how you became you came to lose your boyfriend. Oh shit! So we lost our boyfriend, and now we're gonna steal someone else's. Perfect. Tiago Armando. August twenty seventh, four p.m. Tiago Armando. Age 28. Occupation lawyer. Suspect Dahlia Hawthorne. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or in the suspect's ho uh, or on the suspect's person. It's unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. Bailiff, nuke his house. Now then. The defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I... That is, I... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation by the hand. Uh, that is, I... Um, go right ahead. Memphis, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dougie? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you that you should let me handle this. Uh, sorry, please go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. I believe that girl's trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. That lies somewhere in the police report. I must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then, that same day, the two of them accidentally met. Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? What about? the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well then, the court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on just for a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. How 
I make my feeny? Well, we'll learn about these two lovebirds' story in just a minute. I'm going to go pee-pee real quick. By the way, we... I guess depending on how long this tutorial is, uh, we'll just do this first episode for today. And then maybe we'll start the next episode to see where we are in the present, at least. Alright, so... I'll be right back. <coughs> I'm back. <coughs> <coughs> Fuck me. Whew. All right. Man, frick, COVID. This shit sucks. I want to hear what he likes in a woman. It's very important for this case, of course. Of course it is. I first met my darling Beanie eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse ba this very courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going on ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey-wovey, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright, do that again and you will be held in contempt of court. If we enter our, the final f act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. Alright, let's do it. So until that time, you've been dating Doug Swallow. Yes, I'm a real fool, I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly, I'm ashamed of myself. No, no, not at all! Look at me. I I'm infamous for changing my mind. My critics has e have even uh, taken to calling me Judge Fickle. You should switch to a li different line of work. Despite that, however, he always, always hands down the correct verdict. That's why some people also call him the Great Jajini. Well, not always. It's like we were destined to meet in that very courthouse's basement reading room. Courthouse's reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madame Faye. After all, Feeny was... Feeny was not only an art student, but he was also planning on becoming a lawyer. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing at the courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Faye, I'm warning you if this has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case. Remember that the judge is on Dahlia's side. I better tread carefully.
you get Karma's case wrong? Yeah. Wait, was he on that case? I don't even know. Your Honor, if you'll allow me some latitude, I think I can establish a, uh, establish relevance. Please ask her to continue with their testimony. Very well, young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? Please, Your Honor, the answer is simply this. I come to the courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. Rongo! Rongo! Ronga Rooney! Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? <clears throat> Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? What is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Faye? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there's another tragedy. Another tragedy? You mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. D Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order, order! This is unbelievable! It's true, then. The loveliest rose can hide the cruelest thorn. Miss Faye, th that's not fair! You can't slander my witness! Um... I, Winston Payne, will not... Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Uh, pardon me. Go, go right ahead. It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed uh, some interest in me. Express some interest, huh? Uh, I would like to express some interest. Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've, got, I've tied the two crimes together. I'm just going to stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, you've really lit a fire in my heart and my buttocks. Whoo! Can only tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. <laughs> I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. You see, I mean, listen, I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Hi, Link. Driving home from school, I see. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you've heard from the witness's testimony, she has nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne. But I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Ah! What the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? <laughs> you're growing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear. That posture of self-confidence absolutely smashing. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. What were you talking about with the defense attorney? Well, I, I'm sorry, but that's confidential. According to the report, you were being interviewed regarding another case. Now, you have to be 18 to drive. Isn't it 16? I know you're in Australia, but that's relatively the same laws as here. Lori that was killed. He said he wanted to talk about an incident I was caught up in when I was younger. Why don't you tell us all about that, what that incident was? That has absolutely nothing to do with this case! Is 
16 for learners, 18 for license. Hmm. I wonder if that's the same here. I don't think it is. I think here it's just 16 and you can get your full license. Objective, objection sustained. The defense's question is stricken from the record. You get involved in a lot of incidents, don't you, Miss Hawthorne? Well, I guess I just was born under a bad sign. Sorry, Dolly, I'll protect you! You heard the man. Now that is true love, young lady. Oh, Feeny, please. Oh, please don't make me ill. Albeit, for decidedly different reasons. I'll fucking kill that two-bit, two-timing son of a... I left my seat for just a moment, that's when it happened. How long were you gone? I've already answered all these questions for the police. If you must know, about 10 to 20 minutes. Where were you during that stretch of time? Using the toilet? What are you saying, Miss Faye? Toilet? My perfect little dolly doesn't poop! You are the defendant, Miss Faye. Better luck next time. <laughs> oh, Feeny, please. The police have already looked into this whole matter. This line of questioning is nothing but a waste of time. Objection sustained. Miss Hawthorne, please continue with your testimony. About how much liquid is two teaspoons? Hmm, well, let me see. My bottle of eye drops says it's one half. Oh, it's a half a fluid ounce, which is equal to three teaspoons. It's about two thirds of that. About. Hmm. Wait a minute. Did they just say girls don't poop? I took a large stinking stinker just before the court case. Uh oh. This poison was fed in the lawyer's mug of coffee. It must have been there. After, it must have been after I left the table, so I must have quietly slipped it in there. Yeah, someone. A special kind of poison. How so? Well, I heard that it's almost impossible to detect. Oh, and where would something like that come from? I'm sorry, all I know is uh, I overheard the police saying that they said something about using a chemical process to purify it. Chemical processes. Well, well, that's quite impressive. Most impressive. Oh, wait, but her boyfriend was working in the pharmaceuticals department. At college at the time. Ah. Ugh. I've hydrated. You see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Two lessons. The main reason Miss Hawthorne was never arrested for this crime was because no one could show how she could have obtained the poison. But all we have to find is a way to establish how she could have gotten some, right? Okay. Now, how did a, a lit... Oh, a literature student get a hold of poison of all things. But the lawyer was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat just for a moment. That's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a... Right. Objection! You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had an easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. A boyfriend? You mean the victim Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. If you recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at the Ivy University. A ph ph pharmacology His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment... The culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a bad, uh, matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that that was sitting at that very table was you. No! 
Order, order, order! P could it be? That this beautiful little delicate flower did that? May I say something, Madame Faye? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? I read a poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? I wanted to carry that much liquid. You need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. That was just immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. They didn't find such a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They didn't even mention that in the report. Tisk tisk tisk. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me, madam, but this is a court of law. If you're saying that I threw the poison ca poison counter away, his hair away, I think you need some, some kind of proof. Proof? Uh, she got me good with that. Provide some evidence. I'll have to dis uh, disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. Evidence, we're going to lose this lead. Where's the container of poison she carried, and what happened to it? Oh, right here. You were forced to get rid of that container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. S someone you knew wouldn't be searched. Wh who is this person? Do I know them? Yes, uh, what? Have you been paying attention? It's Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. And so the defendant was the witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But, but, but that's... that's... Mm, that's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day the witness met and fell for Mr. Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. Gotcha, you whore! All for the purpose of hiding the piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they'd find a trace amount. No! Order! Order in the court! Uh, um... Objection. On behalf of Dolly, I object! Mr. Wright, control yourself! I won't let you bully her like this! Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat! Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? Maybe because, uh, because I'm madly in love with her! Hmm... Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyway? You should go with a, more of like a lawyer lady. Someone who would be defending you right now, maybe. Would be interested in maybe... Um, anyway. Well, I guess she must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please, open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... Because of that necklace. Dahlia Hawthorne was not... And is not madly in love with you. But I am! But uh, uh, the only thing she's after is the bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My, my, my necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. I'm afraid you could asking for a present back like that. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. Y you're lying! But you never gave it back to her. To make things worse for her, you insisted on showing everyone you met. That's why she... 
I don't... I don't believe you. No, that's a lie! <laughs> How much is the first Ace Attorney? You can get the modern Ace Attorney trilogy for pretty cheap. It's often like 15 bucks on the PlayStation Store. I got this whole trilogy for 15. Me, me, are you, are you alright? Yes, I think so. That boy, he went completely insane. W where's Mr. Wright? Looks like the bailiff caught him. So she'll be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no! The bottle necklace! Miss Hawthorne's present! It's gone! What? That's, that's terrible! Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. That's the only thing that could have saved him. What in the blazes are we gonna do now? Well, you've already proven it. Mr. Wright, this sort of behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm afraid your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright, what did you do with the bottle necklace? Forgive me, I, I, I'm sorry. It's okay, just give back the necklace. I ate it. You what? You... you ate it! It was too big to swallow, so I just had to chew it into little bits first. But yeah. Uh... What? What's he doing now? Y you're wrong. We've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright! Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? That bottle you swallowed may have had some poison left in it. <laughs> it seems that the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly, that bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I think it's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. He didn't swallow it. He didn't swallow it. He didn't need it. As for the poison, more like a fledgling advanced attorney's overactive imagination. So it would seem. No, there must be some mistake. That bottle must have had any poison left in it. Either that or the poison must have lost its potency. There, there. It's all right, rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you've placed this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the side of prosecution. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Well, I wouldn't do that. She's killed two people so far. Certified glass chewer. Which is why I can state that your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough! I would also trust my life to her. Unfortunately, Miss Fay, I cannot accept your explanation of events. But, but, but why? It's very impossible for a beginner like you to understand. But in a court of law, evidence is everything. <laughs> but he just ate the evidence! After I prove so much, is she gonna get away with everything? No, I think Phoenix got, uh... I think it snapped in Phoenix's head. He's gonna, he's gonna save us here. Well, now the suspicion surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up. Hold it! Yep. Hold it! Mr. Wright! I'm sorry, Miss Fay. I totally, it totally slipped my mind. I'm really, really sorry. I know you believed in me, and I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Uh, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day, the day I met Doug Swallow. The girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. 
Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. Poison? Same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. Could only have been her. That girl's a thief. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! He was only trying to help him. Is it true? Did he really say that? Th that's ridiculous! There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor, this is... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell him! D Dolly didn't do it. Sh she's innocent. Dolly has stole poison eight months ago too, huh? If you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The, de the defense believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing it was to kill someone. Miss Fay. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. It's your last chance. Think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back there for. to kill Mr. Wright. There's only one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was... Mr. Phoenix Wright. M -m 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 me <laughs> That's preposterous! After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered! Well, it's true that that's how things worked out. But let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact... You, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else it could have been. But how, how could that be? I, I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were, were in love. Poor Mr. Wright. This must be killing him. Hang on. I'll bring her to justice, I swear it. And then we'll fuck. Oh, because she's so hard. Uh, uh, sorry. As I thought, as I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to that incident eight months ago. That's right, the bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, wh why would she go as far to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall of that attorney in the basement cafeteria, Dahlia Hawthorne could only think of one thing. How to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. N no, it can't be. Pretty good move she made, too. The evidence was missing for a long time. There was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. He even showed it to everyone he met. Y you mean that that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve, retrieve that piece of evidence. The, the, that can't be true. Feeny, what a joke you are. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me! M miss Hawthorne? It appears that we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine, I can tell you. Plan on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? Seems your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle as a snack. Ugh. Well, uh... Hey, old man. Are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with your big, dumb face? Um, Miss Hawthorne, what's happened to you? Are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? Uh, with absolute proof, you treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. 
Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. But we're not finished. Fine. Didn't ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. Can't let her get away this time. Especially not after calling me a nasty old hag, that little slimy slut. You don't even have jiggle physics on your titties. I do. Mia, please, calm down. If you keep pushing without any evidence, you could pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price? You'd be forced to take your attorney's badge. I'd... You'd be forced to take your off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. No. You'd better think it over carefully, Miss Faye. Or should I s say, Miss Gray? Well, Miss Faye, can you provide evidence, evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? Is the cold killer actually poisoned? Uh... Do I have proof? Mess up here. My career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point, I don't have any evidence that's well founded. Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. I impossible! You, you can't possibly! Stupid woman. Is the opinion of this court that there's already been enough discussion? Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be submitted. Thank God we have safe states. Just one. If you're unable to establish her guilt, I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. You can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. Up and coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She's planning to poison Mr. Wright. If that's the case, then the poison is probably in there. Boop, 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 boop. Ba da da da. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X? Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine? <laughs> Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. What? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony? But I lost my, uh, my bottle of it around lunchtime on that day. I always eat lunch with Dolly, just the two of us. She was the one who took this bottle of cold killer X. And then she poisoned it, knowing that Mr. Wright was going to take some. Now, now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim Doug Swallow that was holding the medicine. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Uh, what are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her little bottle necklace. What she gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That's when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poisoned bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes, and when she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime, including what the defendant and victim were arguing about, and, cut, uh, and the cut electrical cable, that's when she realized, I can't allow Doug Swallow to live. 
She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check on the victim. On top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying that bottle of poison cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they search me like they did eight months ago? A eight months ago? Yes, she disposed the, of the evidence exactly the same way as she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Mr. Doug Swallow. Jesus. Wow. Is this when she's going to reveal herself? Oh, come on now. Everyone, surely, you aren't fooled, are you? The stupid woman, she's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, uh, yes, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Hmm. I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, it's cold uh, medicine. I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. Oh, come on, show us. I dare you to take some of this medicine right now. Mia Fey! Mia Fey! Oh, the butterfly's burned up! Do you think you've won? Well, do you, Mia Fey? <laughs> That's just fine! For the time being, victory's yours. For the time being? Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge, I'll see you later too, okay? Uh, uh, why, um, yes? I'm gonna spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. Whoa, I thought she was gonna, like, scream our heads off or something. Uh, she only really cares to you, Mia. Well, too bad for you. I'm going home to have some macaroni and cheese. Whew. It's finally all over. I, I refuse to accept this! The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim! But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care! I'm just in pain! And I won't believe any word that this rookie lawyer has said! Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Y yes Would you care to try this cold medicine? What? what? Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said. There, there. It's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with every, with my very life. So if she's so trustworthy, I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, um, yes. Here comes the back pedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? <laughs> yeah! My hair is flying off my beautiful hair now! No, 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 no! And that's how he lost his hair. Uh, Mr. Payne, about Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Yes, Your Honor. I'll file p papers for immediate arrest. Tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. I remember specifically saying I would lay down my life for that woman, and I would love to be introduced to her parents. But anyways... Don't lie. Just admit you're wrong. By the way, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor? Wouldn't you be able to... Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seemed to know each other. You and her. Your Honor, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Very well, uh, Mr. Payne. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. 
It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further more to say? Phoenix, could you have, like, held off for a second? My throat, man. Think doing all these voices sick is easy? Not to mention I did a three-hour stream before this. Very well, then. I believe I'm ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. The court finds the defendant, Phoenix Wright, not guilty! Hooray! Is uh, Gumshoe still throwing that? I don't think... Probably not this one. The court's adjourned. You were wonderful in there. Thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvius. Uh, Mr. Grossberg, do you have... Maybe think you could stop talking about them? That's rather rude. Anyway, this case really made me think. What does it really mean to have a relationship with a mutual trust with the client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Uh, oh, Mr. Wright, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, you know, I was thinking. The dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand. I don't think that was really her. Uh, what? Yeah, the dolly I knew could never have said those kinds of terrible things. Maybe, maybe she was like, I don't know, fake or something. Boy, this poor kid still doesn't have a clue. You forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your own sake. And think about me instead, maybe. A hot, you know, up-and-coming defense attorney who would need an understudy who's well of age and could take care of me. Yeah, you're right. That's probably for the best. Also, you need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But, but out of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. Me? <laughs> what kind of companies does this guy keep? Yeah, that's funny. Right now, I, I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department? Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. If I hurry, then I should be still able to save him in time. I see. Say, Miss Faye, a lawyer is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new at this myself, but I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll study my butt off and I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope. I hope we see each other again someday. Maybe even in court. No, he's talking about Edgeworth, Blazer. Remember Edgeworth disappeared? That's the entire reason he became a defense attorney? It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. But me has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very precious ones. Memories that I thought I would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now. But even so, I could hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Five long years. Something has happened that made me think back to her words of wisdom. That's a story for another day. Alright, well, I know this is going to be all we're doing today, but I do want to, like, establish the next one at least. Are we playing Persona now? Is that Joker up there? Oh, there's Mia. Or Maya. Sorry. Maya and Pearl. Maya looks the same, even though she's 19 now. Great. Good. Classic. Time is 1 a.m. Beep! 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 Sound like Mario Kart. Oh. 
Detective, we made it! Whew, what a relief. Glad the jewels, the jewel, the, the, the family ju Oh, gumshoe! Ha ha, you should have, pal. Must have been our rock solid security that scared him off. Would you mind opening the safe just to double check? Did Gumshoe get fired? Did he get fired last time? Ah! Wait for the head! Mask to mask. Salutations. It is Joker. He was rehired in the credits. Oh, he was. That's the part we missed! Oh, shit. We're dealing with a thief? <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm afraid I'll be leaving now. We shall meet again when the next moon is full. <laughs> Persona! Hey, wait a minute. In Persona 3... Never mind. There was a, uh... There's a correlation between the moon and Persona 3. That's all I'm gonna say. And he went into the moon, and that's what... Uh, October 11th, 3.34 p.m. Oh, sorry, 24 p.m. Right in Cole offices. Hey, Nick! Get a load of this! Hey, you listening to me? You can clean the toilet later. This is important. Now, what are you freaking out about now? <laughs> Today will be the last time you talk to me that way. Huh? <coughs> We're about to hit the big time. Big time? What do you mean by we? You don't mean you and me are... Don't be silly. I'm talking about me and Pearly, of course. I thought she was going to say, We're going to be in Smash Brothers, Nick. Hello, it's a pleasure to see you again, Mr. Nick. Pearls, you haven't changed a bit. Wait, what are you doing here anyway? I still have this. Yeah, 26. Me, what more can I say? This is my third year as a young but skilled lawyer. Have you heard, Mr. Nick? Here, take a look at this. Some kind of poster? Treasure exhibition. Oh, the 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 uh, Amy. That's right, Amy. The sacred Amy urn. Curie Village. Isn't that? That's right, it's our hotel. Pearly of mine, that is. What's this about treasures from the boonies? <laughs> Very funny, you can laugh all you want. But you'll be singing another tune tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? The treasures of Curie exhibit doesn't actually start until next week, but the promoter sent us some special VIP entry passes. That's why I dressed up extra special today. What do you think, Nick? Heh, <laughs> same by a different day. This young lady here is Maya Fey. The younger sister of Mia Fey, my friend and mentor. Mentor. First met her two years ago. I was working on the case surrounding Mia's death, and ever since then. I've been the one who's been keeping this law office afloat from behind the scenes. Actually, that's just a cover for her true identity. In reality, she's a spirit medium, and a bit of a shady character. Hey, who are you calling Shady? And this little girl is Pearl Fay, but I usually call her Pearls. She's Maya's cousin, a spirit medium in training herself. I am a little bit young, but I'm gonna help you anyway I can, Mr. Dick. Curane Village is the home to the mysterious Curane Channeling Technique. And Maya here's the daughter of the Curane School of uh, Channeling's Master. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's no joke. I've seen her powers with my own eyes. It's the real thing, all right. Banger tits. That's all I'll say. You'll see later. Earth to Nick. How long are you going to make us two, two gorgeous women like us wait? Yeah, Missy Nick, I can't wait longer. <sighs> Looks like I don't get a choice here. Might as well head on out. October 11th, 7.18 p.m. 
Lordly Taylor Main Exhibit Hall. Lordly Taylor, the city's fanciest and most expensive department store. Treasure exhibit, huh? I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. Wow, this is awesome! It's next time on stream! That's right, Maya! It's the end of stream! Very good. Sorry, guys. I know it's a, it's a bit of a uh, small uh, Ace Attorney stream compared to what we've been doing. But I'm still sick, and we did another stream before this, and I'm kind of running out of time. So, I might be streaming on the weekend. It actually depends if I'm still sick. If I still have COVID tomorrow, I I'll have to, like, look into whether or not I can go to work, or if I have to stay home. And if I'm home, well, we'll play more Phoenix Wright. So, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining. Before I go, I do want to check. Yep, 919. Deceased. Bye, everybody. I'll be having a good time. And I'll see you guys, uh... Well, I don't know. I'll see you when I see you. It depends. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>